Vanska is at a career high number 32 in the rankings, so she's on her way up as Virginia touched on her stellar junior career. She was just in the juniors two years ago and is making an immediate impact at the tour level. points to start of a match. That's a sort of rally that you'd like to have early on, so it gives you a chance to hit a few balls and get your timing. And Sam, she started off this year at 57, her ranking, so with the end of last year. So, you know, that's nice, steady progress. Not quite one of the players who just lights up the world and everybody has so much expectation, but a good, solid performance. Yeah. Sharapova not having a solid receiving game as she's committed three unforced errors. Ball on the backhand. Radvanska here with a chance to hold it. Love. Be just the third game Sharapova's dropped at the U.S. Open this year. holding it love, claiming the first game of the match against Maria Sharapova here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. And Radvanska definitely being able to take the initiative, holding her own in the rallies, but uh, looking as if she was dominating the rallies a little bit better than Sharapova. It sort of remains to be seen if that's because the way the wind swirls in the stadium, if the side that Sharapova started off, which is obviously into the sun, whether it's into the wind as well. You never can tell, even though you have flags flying, you can oh, yes. never tell which way the wind is blowing or swirling down on court. Uh, yesterday in the Marty Fish Tommy Robredo match, both players kept motioning how badly the wind was swirling, and you could see it affecting the ball. So we'll have to watch for that. Sharapova trailing Love One. Sharapova getting used to the win today and also the time of the match. We mentioned this is her first day match, but it's also the first match of the day. So it's still morning and she's been used to playing late at night. Bright day as well. You know, the 11 o'clock match in the morning is quite hard to prepare for. You don't play too many 11 o'clock matches throughout the year. Good no. start for Sharapova. That's 30 love problem with the early matches of course you have to get a practice in so that means you have to be up pretty early but so if you're used to playing night matches you get into a totally different time frame and it's also difficult to eat enough so I don't know how those guys Djokovic and, and Stepanek <laughs> lasted yesterday so Sharapova Trying to repeat the feat of Radbanska and hold it love. She's got a 40 love lead. She hits that ball pretty carefully, not taking any chances. You could see the wind messing her hair around. I don't believe it. Serve and volley. Jenna, I, I, maybe the 11 o'clock start, something happened in her head. <laughs> so Sharapova is showing us she's got a little more variety. She's going to throw at Ravanska as it's one all. Ending that game with a nice serve and volley point. She might do it again as she was successful. Ravanska serving from the end of the court where the sun is brightest. 
Shines right in your face there. A lot of players, uh, you'll see them catch their toss on that end. He had its worst at about one o'clock for a right-hander. Here's a look at the New York skyline. You can see from the top of Arthur Ashe Stadium, we're out in Flushing Meadows, New York. Looking pretty much west into the city. You can almost see to Philadelphia today. So clear. Clear and bright. Sharapova was able to produce winner after winner against her first two opponents. She hasn't quite settled into that form yet here against Radvanska. That's the first error from Radvanska. Really, that was a forced error. It wasn't a easy shot. And it's the first point for Sharapova on Radvanska's serve. You see fans streaming in to the USGA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center this first Saturday of the U.S. Open, heading toward the second week. All the winners today on the women's side will be moving into the round of 16, joining the top half of the draw, which accomplished that yesterday. Sharapova has now won her second consecutive point on Radbanska's serve, 30 all. A little unlucky for Radbanska there. She anticipated correctly, but too much pace from Maria's racket, so. As so often happens, you can win your first opening service and and then you get into trouble very soon after that. So important point here. Break point for Sharapova. First break chance of the match for either player here in the third game. Oh. Seen uh, Sharapova practice that forehand in Arthur Ashe Stadium, Virginia. And I've noticed that she'll go three-quarter speed and make sure she follows through over her shoulder. And I've seen her coach Michael Joyce and her father making motions to where they don't like to see her finish that over her head, which she does sometimes when she misses. Oh, that bad error there from Radvanska. That's so interesting, Sam, because Obviously, it's the point that most people criticize about Maria and her forehand is when she gets late, she doesn't drive through and comes up over her right ear, her finish, her racket. So she, it's something that you just don't want to get into a bad habit with that. Second break chance for Sharapova. And she converts on her second chance. So Maria Sharapova, again, off to a pretty fast start as she takes an early break into the first changeover of the match. Well, you did see her actually coming up with a slice backhand there in one of these rallies. So she does have the opportunity or the ability to keep the ball low, which would, well, it would work on grass, except the grass at Wimbledon bounces pretty high these <laughs> days, slower, as they say, than these courts are. 2-1 Sharapova serving. Sharapova winning the U.S. Open Series coming into this U.S. Open Championship. If she can defend her title, she would earn an additional $1 million bonus for that effort, winning in San Diego and runner-up in or semifinalist in Los Angeles.
Sharapova winning that title in San Diego and then semifinals in Los Angeles. Normally that wouldn't be good enough to win the U.S. Open Series, but not a lot of the top players were able to play those U.S. Open Series events this year because of injuries. Yeah, it seems like it's been a long season and just when you think the women's game is going to hit full stride, you get a lot of players injured or, in Maresma's case, not well. When she had that appendix out earlier in the year, and then she's taken time off to fully recover. But Justine Ennen had some problems after Wimbledon. Both uh, Williams sisters some nagging injuries. Serena hadn't played since Wimbledon when she came here with a thumb injury. Sharapova's injury problem this year has been a, a shoulder that has given her trouble. And she's abbreviated her service motion, changed it to try to protect that shoulder for the long run. That wide, and Sharapova at 30 all, trying not to give the break right back. I'm surprised she came out at the wrong end of that rally because that's the sort of point she loves to play, Sharapova, just hitting the ball really hard from the baseline. Once again, it seems that the side Sharapova is on is a little bit more difficult. It's going to be a break chance for Radvanska. Sharapova breaking in the last game and facing a break point here early. I mean, at least with her serve that she's tried to adapt to help the shoulder. It has not totally abbreviated. At least most of it looks intact. There was an area that I always felt could cause her some problems. more straight up with the arm now to relieve a little of the pressure on that shoulder. A little bit like Andy Roddick does. Good move from Radvanska to try and attack the second serve and it and that works. jostling around worked. Double fault from Sharapova handing the break right back to Radvanska so she's doing something no one else has been able to do at this year's US Open. That's slow Sharapova down. Well, as you see her right on the other side, she moves right in. She makes a presence very much felt returning the second serve. Something that shows that she's concentrating. Oh. Making a little bit of a commitment to the net in this match, Sharapova is. That's a little bit different look than what we've been seeing. That's quite amazing. Again, another sortie to the net. And if she'd hit a proper volley instead of trying to hit a clever drop volley, she might have won the point. Stage in the match, though, Sam, she's already Maria, Maria grunting quite loudly. I mean, you get used to both Venus, and Venus not so much, but Serena, when Serena's in trouble in a match, she's, her volume just goes up so much. And the same with Maria, but she's, well, that's good serve. Advanska now taking it to Sharapova. This is like her first service game, 40 love. Beautiful surf, but just going on about the, you know, the volume coming. It doesn't, it's not an endearing feature. <laughs> I hear so many people say, oh, if only Maria didn't make so much noise when she hits the ball. Well, she's probably going to be screaming here in a minute as she's <laughs> committed eight unforced errors already. And Radvanska 
has gotten us back on serve. 2-3 here in the opening set. Beautiful serve. 106 miles per hour. Sharapova was asked if the abbreviated motion has taken anything off of her serve. She says a little bit, but she's still able to hit it up around the 116, 117 mile per hour range. And she has hit one 114 today. Uh, you know, if you're six foot two, you don't have to necessarily crush every single ball. Cheating in again. Now, what do you mean by that, Virginia? If you're 6'2", you don't have to crush every single serve. Well, I mean, she's got pretty decent advantage of height over her opponent today, who's only 5'8". So she's, the ball's coming from a tremendous height. So. I have to say, Sharapova is usually pretty good with the percentage of, of uh, first serves in, but, you know, just get a smooth action and a really good serve, and it's going to be effective enough. That was, that was actually, you see, she generated 113. We reckon the wind is a little bit behind her, but it was a very nice, smooth serve. Getting almost 70% of her first serves in at the moment. She's only dropped one point when she's gotten that first serve in. Sharapova looking at a love hold herself. Well, that's this awfully good play from Radvanska because the volley was good from Sharapova. Another serve and volley. I mean, I'm just so happy to see her adding something to her game, even if she does. And I mean, that's well played. Yeah. She was in the right position. She did everything right, just beaten by a really fantastic lob. Yeah, let's hope that doesn't discourage her because she's four of six when she makes her way into the net here early. Still game point, 40-15. Sharapova trying to draw even here in the first set. And she does. You can see the wind pushing that ball out even further. So three all. Drop shot. Radvanska is showing she's got some touch. It's just so good to see a young player who might well be overwhelmed playing Maria Sharapova, thinking on the court, coming up with good variety. I mean, that beautiful lob in the previous game. Obviously, that's the better side to attempt a drop shot from because it seems to be into the wind. Advanska's old, our younger sister, Ursula, currently plays on the tour, and she has an older sister who also won the Wimbledon Junior title, which she was able to do a couple of years ago. Good tennis family, coached by her father. Played. Radvanska stopped anticipating Sharapova was going to go behind her, and it didn't work out. So 30 all. 
Banska trying to avoid the break point. But she can't. Sharapova's going to have another chance to break. They just both seem to be having a little trouble in the backhand corner and the far end. Winning their serves easily from the other end. Smart play from Radvanska there. It's being beaten by the balls of Sharapova's racket when Sharapova's in the making angle, so hit it back deep up the middle. And it was sort of a battle of wills, that rally. This is nice to see uh, someone actually challenging Sharapova after the runaway first two matches she played. Radvanska's holding her own. We saw a terrific match yesterday evening with Serena Williams and Vera Zvonareva, but it's t it's tough to make that Vera Zvonareva playing just as well, if not better than Serena, but still difficult to close it out. Serena just had extra experience and reputation, really, winning her the match. There it is again. That that's definitely. Very difficult to cover in that backhand corner. Great shot from Sharapova. She rolls up that ball and it just explodes off the court. Well struck, good balance. Back to Deuce. Oh. That was Deuce at three all in the opening set and Sharapova will have her second chance to break in this game. But every opening Sharapova has had, Radvanska has been able to close it. That time Sharapova really working the angles. I like the way Maria's playing today though. I mean, she's making a few errors, but she's a good thinker on the court. You know what she's trying to do. Good. Well oh. played. Radvanska ready and waiting in the right place. <laughs> That'll wake everybody up. Well done. What a terrific get. Now at this point looked ball looked as if it was going to go out. Maria chooses to go cross court because she thinks she's gonna even if uh, opponent's there, she's still gonna nail it and great effort from her. Agnieszka. Now that backhand has been the consistent shot for Sharapova. And it gets her to her third chance to break in this game. Radvanska really needs to try to avoid hitting anything deep, anything to the backhand side of Maria that's a little bit short because she is just ripping those cross court. Oh, that's so good. What an opening seven games we've had here. These two going toe to toe. Good stuff from, from Vanska. I mean, that is not the easiest volley in the world to hit, but she keeps her racket head up and it very firm and very committed to it. Certainly is decisive on the court, which is half the battle.
Now you mentioned Sharapova now being a good thinker on the court, Virginia. And I can remember when that hasn't always been said about Maria Sharapova. When she first came out, people commented on how she just had one way to play, and that was blast balls. And if it worked, she beat her opponent. If it didn't, she lost easily. I know. I'm, I'm sort of laughing at myself when I said that. But I think she's actually coming out, you know, trying, really trying agree. to put in some volleys and put in some short angles. And Radvanska keeps saving these break points. Because you look at the way Radvanska plays, and now this is a very good young player, but without, you know, she's young. She's only 18, and she hasn't had all that attention so much. But she's, she's doing a lot of different things, and she's staying very calm out here. Good serve. Uh, Radvanska's patience may be rewarded here. Game point. She's faced three break points in this game. Sharapova's had six already in the set and has only converted once. She needed a first serve there. Maria was going to try to be all over this second serve. Oh, and he just made it. Sharapova taking a long look at that. She didn't challenge it, though, and Radvanska gets out of trouble. We stay on serve. First time at this year's U.S. Open, Maria Sharapova is being pushed. And she serves against Radvanska here at 3-4, opening set. Double fault for Sharapova, that is her second of the match. I'm just very interested to see how Sharapova is this game. Because, you know, psychologically, you have all those chances to go up a break and you lose them. And then you feel, oops, now I'm serving on the difficult end. I lost my serve here the last time. Well, I think oh, the phrase you mentioned there, serving on the difficult end, needs to be emphasized. This is the side of the court where everyone's struggling to hold. And Radvanska was able to do it. Sharapova feeling that pressure. Short second serve. And a short forehand into the net produces love 30. Radvanska had a break point earlier in the set, converted right away, looking for her second chance. You see Radvanska. Seven winners, three unforced errors. Great start to this match for the 18-year-old. Sharapova is now 20. You know, this is sometimes where you hit snags when you've won your previous two matches so easily. You don't know how to mentally take it when somebody is really opposing you properly. Absolutely not what Radvanska wants to do there, floater, backhand long. Sharapova had so many, so many struggles earlier in the season because of her shoulder. And then, you know, finally after Wimbledon, she started to play better and won in San Diego and semis of Los Angeles. But there still isn't all that much confidence giving tennis. this game. Well, she's behind, so the decibel level usually goes up. And right away, Radvanska will have chances to break here. 
Vonsky, if she could break here, would serve for the set. Sharapova hasn't come close to losing a set yet here at the Open. If you remember when they played in Istanbul earlier this year, Vonsky won a set of her, won the second set. Good shot. Throws that up into the wind, and it takes it right out. So one break point evaporates, but still one more facing Sharapova. A very steadfast point from Sharapova, throwing up that good lob into the wind. Sharapova has just surrendered her serve two times in this set. And Radvanska will serve for the opening set against Maria Sharapova. Well, Radvanska certainly wants to remember her previous service games from this end. She hasn't lost a point on her service from this end. That's right. So far. Sharapova already going through, a, trying to adapt to this new service motion and has had a lot of issues with the serve. And on a windy day like today, everything just seems, all of her problems seem to be compounded. Advanska's handling it much better. Yeah, that, that's the problem, though. If she, Radvanska just hits the ball deep to the baseline, Sharapova doesn't have to think about it. She just responds so well, and she is so good. She's got that tremendous force behind her shots. So, as so often happens, you serve for the set, and things go a little differently. Sharapova, no more room for error. She's got to break here to keep the set alive. She's going to have that chance right away. As Virginia pointed out, Radvanska hadn't dropped a point on this side of the court serving. And now she hasn't won a point in this game. So typical, isn't it? Break serve. You serve for the set at 5-3. And suddenly it's going by in a flash, and you've made three errors. One saved. Sharapova with 15 unforced errors in this set alone. I remember her first round match against Vinci. She only had 10 unforced errors the entire match with 30 winners. She's not been in any sort of rhythm today yet. Got a lot of that due to the quality of play coming at her. Radvanska's broken right back. So Sharapova avoids losing the set, but she's still not out of trouble. Number 30 can get to the point of winning, but a lot of times can't close it out. And that's when you take the next step. So that's what happened to Radvanska, but Sharapova now serving to stay in the set at 4 5. Let listen. Well, a little help from Sharapova, but Sam, you know, one of the problems is when you've got two players, Sharapova's 20, but she has been such a star winning Wimbledon at 17, and Radvanska must have looked up to her when she was just a junior. And so being that two years difference and two years younger, 
it's one of those very difficult barriers to overcome because you always grow up being the weaker player and you're the junior and they're the senior right. and then it really takes quite a, a few years to feel that you're equal to them. Beautiful play. Sharapova getting fired up here, 15 all. Night trip into the net. She's made a few errors today, as you pointed out, Sam, but it doesn't look like she's lost confidence in any of her shots. Her shots look pretty well grooved today. I, mean, I, I thought that was a forced serve. I mean, you know, we talk about just keeping your serve smooth and you get more out of it. And if you start forcing it, you can lose your rhythm. And there, as case in point, Sharapova has lost her rhythm. Your story you were telling me about a minute ago, Virginia, reminded me of a story James Blake tells about in 2001 when he was just coming out on the tour. He played Patrick Rafter in Cincinnati when Rafter was at the top of the rankings. And uh, he took Rafter to a first set tiebreak, lost it, and then lost the second set easily. And when they shook hands at the Ned at the end of the match, Rafter looked him in the eye and said, you know, you could have beaten me today. <laughs> and then Rafter said, but do you know why you didn't? And Blake, of course, said, no, why? He said, because you didn't believe you could beat me. And uh, that's when you make that next step in your tennis career, when you believe you can be a top player. Oh, t tell me about it. I mean, it's just the, the whole thing right there is you suddenly get to a close situation and you really actually are thinking, they're better than me. Or am I really going to win this? What a good serve. At a close situation, as you put it. 30 all at 4-5 and Sharapova comes up with the ace. Sharapova's father ever present in her player box. So Sharapova trying to even this match. Opening set, Radvanska's hopes alive here. Radvanska looking for set point. It's funny, you know, with her serve adaptation here, Maria, she has to turn earlier, rotate earlier to generate the extra power that normally she would have got from taking her racket back and getting the pace from back forwards. And that throws the toss off a little bit because she's as she's throwing the ball up as she turns, and that's why, some, why I believe, and maybe the wind as well, but why she's caught a few tosses today. If you just go back, you can get your toss up straighter. She's taking a lot of time before each serve trying to figure this out. And that fourth double fault gives Redvanska her first set point. Advanska has not double faulted the entire set. Sharapova with four. A lot of clapping going on. I never know who it's for at set point. <laughs> and yes. She does believe. Redvanska has taken the opening set against Maria Sharapova, and she does it impressively with a backhand winner up the line. Agnieszka Redvanska. 
Number 30 seed, 32nd ranked player in the world from Poland. We'll try to close this out in straight sets, but we're a long way from there. Sharapova <laughs> fired up after a bathroom break in between sets. Good for her to probably get off the court for a couple of minutes and regroup. Oh, that was an awfully good serve. 99 miles an hour, which doesn't seem fast compared with Maria's first serves, but it really zipped through. Well, Maria was successful coming back to the first point, just thumping a return, but she's got to be careful. There's a little bit of wind around. If she broke a string there, or she's just not happy with that frame, but she's getting a new racket out. Certainly sprayed that shot out pretty wildly. Thirty fifteen. First game, second set. I don't like that racket either. The ball with so much mm -hmm. movement on it. Let's look at the Rabanska camp there. As they've got to be very happy how things are going. Rabanska serving 40 15. <laughs> uh, there was a good return off a let ball, but pretty good to try and. Hit one when it doesn't matter. Unfamiliar territory at the U.S. Open is Maria Sharapova as Radvanska won the first set 6-4, up 40-30 here in the opening game of the second. It's well played. Picked it right out of the sun, and Radvanska not showing any signs yet of nerves as she maintains her com composure and holds to start the first game of the second set. She hit a shot in that rally, Virginia, that I haven't seen in a long time, a slice forehand from the baseline. Well, you know, we've been saying that it just seems to be difficult that far end and you're taken by the power that's coming at you and the wind throwing it. The number's a little bit better in the first serve, but uh, four double faults from Maria Sharapova. 66% of first serves is very good. Sharapova has really struggled with her second serve, though. She's only won two second serve points in this match. And she steps up to the line to serve for the first time here in the second set. Love one. Well, at the sort of general movement of Radvanska, sort of showing up, Maria. Maria looked slow getting to this ball. You know how Maria says she doesn't like playing on clay, and I, I'm only quoting her on this, but I, she sort of <laughs> stumbles around a bit. I mean, Maria's looking very fit at the moment, but she said, she said, I feel like a cow on ice yeah. on the clay. And, She's, you know, not, doesn't like the movement on that, but usually on these courts, she's the movement's as good as it's going to be, which is pretty, pretty good. Here comes the shot that's been her nemesis today, the second serve. See how much time she's been taking in between the first and second serve, almost like she's going through the shot in her mind. And another double fault 
It's clearly a problem now. And I was, here's a look at that service profile. You see that second serves one, that is two of 11. That's where the 18% comes from. I was talking to somebody about this match, Virginia, and they, they said that they would like to see her have to serve in a tight situation because her first two matches have been so easy they still weren't sure that this serve issue had been worked out. And it seems to be the case. How right they were. I mean, you don't really get a full indication of how you play when you just go right through your opponents. And in Grand Slam tournaments, you don't want to, you know, you like to have a nice, easy opening match, but by the second match, you, you really want a little bit of opposition to get the feel of what a competition's like. This is a lot of opposition for Sharapova right now. And a lot of it has to do with herself. She has fallen into a bad patch here with her second serve. We're going to see another one. Double fault at her last time. Look at Redbonska crowding that service line. Well, that's... Uh Maria Sharapova at her best. Striking the ball deep into the corners, waiting for her opportunity to put it away. So a well-played point there, but it's not all going her way here. Fifteenth winner of the match for Sharapova. What her dad probably doesn't know is she's committed 21 unforced errors. He probably thinks it's 42. <laughs> oh, Radvanska paying for that. It wasn't a terrible drop shot, but if the wind's behind you, you're not really going to benefit because it's not going to stop short. Maria reading it very early and very determined here. Good shot. Game point, Sharapova. If there's one thing you can't question, and that is her winning desire. She will fight till the end. No, oh, determination. And just as Radvanska's feeling things are a little bit easy, they could all turn around. And Sharapova with a come on, bold serve. And so it's one all, second set. rather generous of Radvanska just to let that game get away from her so easily after she was 30 love up. Vanska serving here 15 love, one all, second set. She had a love 30 lead in Sharapova's last service game. That's the first double fault of the match for Radvanska. You know, I, I get the feeling, Sam, that Radvanska is has let up a tiny bit. She sort of sensed that Sharapova was having some problems, and I, it was almost like she said, yippee. But that you can't afford to do that because Sharapova will fight her way through her problems. That's a good shot. She's got to, in, in other words, Radvanska's got to really fight to, to control the points and to win every point she can without making any unforced errors. We saw that last night with Augustine Caleri upsetting late Hewitt. The way he won that match was just continuing to take it to Hewitt when he got to the point of sort of backing off a little bit. Hewitt was right back in it, and then he reestablished himself. Oh, I see that was a short second serve. Not really surprising having just served a double into that court in her last serve there. But she's the one, Radvanska's the one who's letting herself down a little bit at the moment. 30 all, Sharapova looking for a break point. She broke Radvanska twice in the first set. 
short serve. And a break point for Sharapova. And she's slowly trying to get her way back into this. Uh, she was on a pretty big hook there five minutes ago, less than five minutes ago, Maria. Slices have been effective in this tournament, as long as you can keep them really deep and low and heavy. And the danger sometimes is that they sit up. Yeah. Vonska lucky there because Sharapova had a good look at it, but just overhit it. <laughs> now in these fast courts, that slice can really slide through the, through the court. Just missed it. Good rally, but that's the sort of point that Maria Sharapova loves. Everything deep. She can, Maria can hit those in her sleep. Probably does. Vance has got to put her away. Sharapova's got that intensity back. Was wide. So a break of serve for Maria Sharapova as she's trying to regain control of this match. She's up 2 1 in the second. We're back here in Arthur Ashe Stadium, Maria Sharapova up an early break against Radvanska, who took the first set 6 4. Sharapova trying to close the door on any thought of an upset by the number 30 seed. rallies Maria is going to dominate she might have to hit a few more shots than she likes but she's still if she keeps contained she's not going to make errors on those and there was a good first serve Big opportunity for Maria to get really back on the fast track here she just has to I think she's just got to make sure she doesn't give away any points make errors She's managed things much better here in the second set. It's just the fourth game, but five winners, only three unforced errors. That's just what I mean. She yeah. doesn't want to be doing. One of the most impressive things about Sharapova to me, I remember the first time I ever saw her, she was playing doubles with Lisa Raymond here at the U.S. Open, uh, maybe in 2001 or 2002, several years ago. And I just couldn't believe how hard she competed. It just really seemed like winning that match was you know, her entire world at that moment. That's a beautiful shot. Well, you know, you consider just the difference between these two. Agnieszka is only 18, but she's been playing junior tournaments. She's been on the sort of slow track up the ranking. I mean, she's a good player. But she won all those junior championships, but Maria didn't play too many of those. She just went straight into the big world out there with a plum. A 
another unforced error, and it's 30 all. And the big world has really come to her. I mean, she's one of the most recognizable athletes in the world, and that I have an appreciation for the for the fact that she does seem to compete so hard, and she is trying to change things in her game and become a better tennis player because of all the other distractions in her life. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, there was a criticism that she hadn't really moved forward in her game, but certainly seeing signs that she's trying to now. Uh, you know, she's not, she hasn't played all that much this year, really, or well, not with as much success, just the one tournament win on the hard courts in San Diego. Beating Patty Schneider, but she lost a set to her. And this so. is the first chance for Radvanska to break here in the second. Just one more thought again about the difficulty of playing. You play two matches under the lights and still conditions. Let's see if she challenges that. It looked like it was a good serve. And then you get out here at 11 o'clock in the morning, which she's can't imagine the last time she played a match at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's probably here at some point, if ever. It's gusty, it's bright. You lose a little bit of confidence and it's really hard to get it back. She's waiting for the wind to drop. And you have the pressure of being the heavy favorite. I, didn't, I wonder why she didn't challenge that serve. It looks so good. Well done. Nice. And, you know, on top of that, Sam, of course, this is the side of the draw that everybody says is the easier side. Mm -hmm. So so it's sort of, it, you know, you, everybody automatically assumes that Cheryl Pope is going to come through. And I think that just throws a lot more pressure on her, that sort of expectation. I, I do think that her quarter of the draw, though, is difficult for Sharapova because right. even if she gets through this, she would face either Nicole Vitasova or Shahar Payer who are both very fiery competitors. Absolutely. Very, very tough. You know, we're thinking about the easier half of the draw and that it's an easier job for some of the seeds. Well, we're losing seeds in this half of the draw quite rapidly. Petrova just going up. Oh, wow. That's one of the worst misses I've seen. It's not good, is it? That was just was that six double, but that was just a tricky shot to live with. Sharapova saves the break point, trying to become a winner here of the second set as she dropped the first. Sharapova lost the first set 6-4 in quite a battle here at 2-1. She is up a break, trying not to give it back, but has had a lot of problems with her second serve, a horrible double fault earlier in this game. She finally gets to gain point. She had to save two break points against her in this game. And she was really let off the hook by Radvanska two games ago when Radvanska was game up and love 30 on Maria's serve. And, and she let Maria off the hook. And you just think there's a momentum sh shift. But Maria's struggling, struggling to consolidate that. Better. And Sharapova fights through it. Everything is a struggle today for Maria Sharapova. But she's making her way through this second set. Advanska again took a set off Sharapova in Istanbul earlier this year on clay. That she took that middle set. So I was interested to see if she was able to learn anything from, from that small victory within the match.
one gets the impression, or I certainly got the impression the first that the Ravenska was very much of a presence. I was watching her probably even more than Sharapova. And then suddenly in the second set, it seems to be where the Sharapova... To lose the point, to, to come to mark and then ask for it. But I could have run to the ball. But There's a first mark right me, there, it's wide. Sharapova was wanting to challenge a call. The umpire is telling her, you have to stop play to challenge it. And she's saying that she did. She didn't run for the ball, and the umpire disagrees. Maybe, maybe she needs to have a little argument just to get herself going here, fired up, because she's very concerned, Maria. She's very conscious of her own problems. But I was saying, you know, it seems to be Maria either hitting big shots or loses the second set, and Radvanska has sort of gone into a... Oh, Almost like a passive mode. Yeah, Sharapova is really trying to impose herself here in this second set. And Radvanska has been put back to the role of a sort of counterpuncher playing defensive. And that's not how she won that first set. and an error playing it in Maria's terms and the set Radvanska has definitely started to play on Maria's terms that uh, it was sort of noticeable at the beginning that she wasn't really allowing herself to get involved in these long deep hard hitting rallies which Maria laps up really 1530 Drop shot to drop shot, and Radvanska was anticipating Sharapova coming right back at her. She ducked, in fact, but Sharapova doesn't hit at her, goes to the open court instead. <laughs> Probably a wise move, though. But it brings up break points for Sharapova, 15-40. Shot. Got it! And even Redvanska applauding that. Sharapova up two breaks here in the second. Kind of set for Radvanska. Nothing's going her way. And in the first set, all of those shots were going her way, it seemed like. Just losing concentration a little bit early in the second set. And then it's hard to turn the switch back on. On quarter an hour, 16 minutes. 12.35 in the afternoon here on this Saturday in New York. Maria's first serve percentage uh, for the whole match has been 63%, which is higher than Radvanska's, but it certainly looks as if she's not comfortable with her serve. Six double faults. Just thinking so much about it, hating to throw the ball up when the wind's blowing, which it is. And every time she know. takes that long pause, it seems like she's double faulted. So conscious about it. You know, once you start worrying about second serves, I mean, the players who've had these problems with second serves, I mean, in the men's when Korea couldn't serve, yeah. now he's not even playing anymore. I mean, I, I don't know what happened to him. And going back to when Sabatini had problems. to Mentia, but you know, she had problems with her serve and everybody 
sort of said that the girl who can't surf and yet she managed <laughs> to find a way of, yeah. of rolling it in and it became an awkward surf. But the problem is, Sam, it's not only are you aware of the fact that your surf's uh, getting a twitch in it, but every press conference you go to, everybody right. makes sure they ask you how you're doing with your surf. So it becomes a really, <laughs> a really big elephant. Yeah, Dementieva to me is the only one of those players you mentioned that seems to live with it pretty effectively. I always said if tennis was a drop and hit game, she'd probably be number one in the world. <laughs> once she got that point started, she was uh, as good as anyone. So Sharapova, 40-30, trying to get to 5-1 and force a third set eventually. Radvanska just totally going off the boil. I mean, really the best thing for her to try to regroup before the third set. It's almost like she's been infected by the problems that Maria has. Maria's taking an awfully long time. And I think Radvanska may be losing a little bit of concentration, waiting for the ball to come. Uh, Sharapova keeps her in it. But do you remember how right at the beginning of the match, Radwanska was jumping around on second serves of, of Sharapova, so really making a presence, thought and thinking clearly. Well, she hasn't really done that now. I mean, she's yeah. sort of looking, waiting there for the second serve, looking a little bit bored and uh, fed up, and it's not the right attitude. You can see on that previous shot the wind blowing at the top of the stadium. Good striking of the ball by both of them, but there's only really going to be one winner of those sort of points. Sharapova's just got to get a serve in. Once these points get going, she's been fine. Flags are straight out today. And it's been blowing uh, really since very early this morning. It's supposed to be an all-day event. It seems to be Marie's having more trouble with the second serve into the left court. She has double faulted a few times with that ad side. Her last service point there was a double fault. That's three double faults yes. this game into the ad court. Well, it is hard to keep a pattern or a rhythm when it's so erratic, the tennis coming from Maria. Good for her, she's up two breaks, so even if she drops this game, it's not the end of the world in this set. As she tries to force a third set. <laughs> Took out some frustration on the ball in that point. Good one-two combination from Sharapova. In the third round of Wimbledon, when Venus Williams was playing against Moragami and they had a rain break, Venus was in all sorts of problems in that match, and she came back, she served eight double faults in two games. But then once she sort of cleared it out of her system, then her first serve started clicking, and she, I doubt if she served another double fault in that match. So and I don't know if the same's going to happen for Maria. Well, she finally holds serve, as Radbanska really hasn't made her pay for all these double faults. Five of her nine have been in this set, and she's up 5-1. So uh, Radbanska not taking advantage of her opportunity. Sharapova has just been too mentally tough here in this second set. And Radbanska now finds herself serving to stay in the set. First match of the day here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. First of three during the day session. Good. Came right down inside the baseline. Ha! 
good serve, but a terrific return from Maria. And Sharapova looking for a set point for the first time today. Vanska really needing to get herself back in gear here before the set's over. Well, that's called in that serve. Whoa! That's what we saw a lot of in the first set. Slightly an annoyed shot, but she hits it well. Still in trouble. 15-30. Arfanska in danger of facing a set point against her. And she will. Her second double fault. She can't get that almost to the net. Well, you saw when she missed the first serve then she looked up at the sky because the ball had dropped so far in front of her she couldn't get onto it so it weren't really causing problems on serve as well oh nice picked it right up off of her shoe and picks up the second set so we are headed into a third set to decide a spot in the round of 16 between Radwanska and Sharapova here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. She had 14 winners, 10 unforced errors, and just seemed to be very mentally tough in that set. Even the double faults, she did not let get her down. And Radvanska just kind of faded away, was not the same aggressive player she was in the first set. So it all comes down to a third set to decide who moves on to the round of 16. Sharapova to serve to start it. Actually, a better return there from Lutvanska. She's got to do something a little different. She cannot resort to what most of the players' favorite game is, just hitting the ball deep hard, because Sharapova is as good at that as anybody out there. And you think the last experience with Sharapova would have taught her that, if nothing else, losing that third set, as you mentioned a moment ago, six love. Every time you lose a six love set to somebody, it makes you reevaluate. It's a lovely shot, a good serve. And a little behind it, the ball sitting up. She was so successful, really, in the first set. And not playing to Sharapova's strengths. Sharapova sort of arming that serve in. It was only 89 miles an hour. Vonska couldn't bring it back into the court. 30-15. Early on, though, Sam, we were talking about, you know, her height and her serve. So if she serves at 89 but places it well, it's still coming from, you know, difficult uh, height for a shorter player. But serve Hold again. You know, Yarko Niemann on the men's tour, he played uh, John Isner in the first round, and he had practice partners in the warm-up stand inside the service box and serve to him. So just he... He could get used to that ball coming at him from different angles, <laughs> facing such a tall player. Yeah, I know that happens a lot with the trainers of the players because, you know, often they don't want to be serving as at full tilt from the service line. So they step in just behind the service line and whack these big bullets at their players. It's great. Game point, Sharapova, first game, third set. Sharapova holds. Good to see Radvanska in that game, at least looking a little more like she did in the first set, more aggressive in her shots. Yeah, and really hustling with her footwork as well, but beaten there by superior 
shots from Sharapova. Let's take a look back at the second set stats where you can see Sharapova really clean things up compared to the first set, except for the double faults. 14 winners compared with five with Brunska really struggling to hit winners. Coming to the net again, Sharapova, she was pretty good in the first set as well. Love one here in the third. It's a beautiful start to the weekend here in New York. As you get those pictures from high above, blimp, you can hear the buzz of the blimp floating around today. That's what's giving us those big pictures. That's uh, something that Rebanska's got to fight so hard against. She, remember, she served a couple of doubles from this end just recently, so she had to be very careful with that second serve, and that was exactly what Sharapova wanted. A nice sitting up serve to thump. Yeah, the second serve has been a struggle for Redvanska in the second and now start to the third sets. Sharapova really enjoying returning that. And has a 15-30 lead here, looking to get a break to start this third set. And Sharapova's going to have that chance, 15-40. Again, Sharapova's in this bottom half of the draw, which overall, you don't have as big a names as you have in the top half. But in Sharapova's section here, we touched on it briefly earlier, it is difficult. If she can negotiate this match. Either Vitasova or Payer, or Payer awaits Sharapova. And both of those women, very tough competitors. They will not be intimidated by Sharapova at all. In fact, we'd like nothing more than to take her out. I'm sure, that's right. They played t this evening. That's right. Out here at 7 o'clock. So Sharapova is starting to make Radvanska fade back into the pack as the 32nd ranked player in the world put up quite a fight in the first set, but she hasn't threatened since. Too many errors from Rudvanska. Just really reacting for the last half dozen games or so, just reacting to Sharapova's shots, not really able to initiate anything different. First winner of the third set for Redvanska. This one sits up a little bit, but she takes her time on that. And I've just had the feeling that she, you know, that it's all just going by her rather fast, this, these last six games. It's more than six games, isn't it? It's eight games she's lost in a row. Vanska set one love up and 30 love on Maria serve and then seemed to just stop being the aggressive player, the think thinking player started being just Start reactive. reactive. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's cool. Amazing, isn't it? A little mini opening <laughs> for her now. 15.30, bad body language from each player. Hasn't been a very positive match. Have to start counting Maria's double force on our toes now. <laughs> She's up to ten. And now a 
much bigger opening for Radvanska. She will actually have break point 15:40. Biggest tennis stadium in the world, Arthur Ashe Stadium. Where we are beginning the day. Andy Roddick and Thomas Johansson will be out here next, followed by Federer and Isner. Night session, Vadisova, Payer, and Kubek Blake. And we're just getting started here with Sharapova and Radvanska. That's a winner. And there's a break of serve. So Radvanska's not dead yet. She breaks to get on serve here in the third. One, two. An eight game run there for Maria. Not all from her own doing though. A lot of it gifted to her. So these first couple of points, you know, and also Radvanska is so ready to go at her own pace. And I think she needs to slow down a little bit to accommodate Maria's slightly slower pace. Now Sharapova wobbling a little bit. So you see Sharapova always walking back to the back fence before she turns around. So she's ready. But I just uh, also have the feeling her advance because just is a little bit on automatic pilot still. Did yes. She make it? Dirty love. Ball paints the line. Close, wasn't it? So look at her family, as we said earlier. Her sister there on the right actually is the number two junior in the world. As we mentioned earlier, won Wimbledon just like Agnieszka did. We are settling down to business again. It's nice to see, though, that finally here in the third set, they're both playing all out, because that's what made the first set so fun. Well, going back to what I said about being an auto, just playing an automatic, I mean, that's fine if you're winning, but if you're not winning, you have to start thinking about it and maybe changing your tempo. Another great striper down the line. Game point, Radvanska to complete the comeback, mini comeback, as she dropped the first two games here in this set. Looking to even things here at 40-15. Good. Let's see if Radvanska gives us our first challenge. She's walking up that line, and no, she's not going to. Checking the mark, that looked like a pretty good shot, although Maria cut it a little bit fine. It's an immediate reaction from the linesman to call it good. Still game point, Radvanska. Thank you very much. Sharapova gifts the game. It's two all in the third. It's tightening up here. Well, that's a little bit benefiting there. I guess that was the happiest moment when the, that ball just went sailing out, not even a big challenge in that game. Sharapova pushing a forehand out long to start this game. And when things have been tight in this match, honestly, Sharapova has not been at her best. She has played her best tennis once she starts getting a lead and gets on a roll. And it is tight right now, two all in the third. God, just overhitting a bunch of forehands. Wind behind her. She 
hate serving this side. Boy, if you get uh, a thing about one side, it's always this side. Excuse me, the left court with the wind behind her. It's very difficult. Second serves are really tough. Well done. Is it good enough? No. Well, that was worth a run for Radvanska. <laughs> Certainly was. I don't know what happened to Maria there. I mean, that's, it was a pretty decent shot, but this one, she just wasn't watching the ball at all. And that was a very tight looking response. Please don't get it back. Love 30. <laughs> 79 miles an hour in that serve. Triple break point. And again, Sharapova sort of falling apart here as things get tight. Advanska, the beneficiary of some pretty poor unforced errors, honestly. And suddenly, a couple of, in the last two games, two winners from Maria and about five errors. Great point. There was a mini chance for Radvanska in the middle of that rally. She got a shorter ball, but it was all so fast and furious that she just couldn't adjust to it and take advantage of it. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but it certainly does feel a lot like that first set right now. Still break point, 15-40. Maria playing these long, longish rallies well. And she can get her first serve in. I mean, it's not like she's winning points easily on her first serve anyway, but she really needs to get that first serve in. So just get it in, place it well, get it deep, and be patient in the rally. One more break point to try to save here. Sharapova, just six of 23 on second serve points in this match. There it is. Sharapova continuing to struggle with the second serve. She says, here's a break, Radvanska. Now let's see what she does with it. 3-2 in the third. Quite a lot of drama building here. Radvanska given a break in the last game and leads 3-2 here in the third set against Maria Sharapova, who coming into this match had only dropped two games and two matches and had hit 30 winners. Very few unforced errors in each match. Today, Radvanska has been taking it to Sharapova, and Sharapova's been giving away a lot. This is the difficult serve to make when dropping the ball when curls around and it sort of dumps the ball just as you're about to hit it you really have to put the toss up a little late when it's this gusty oh. 30 love well this is really a match for Radvanska to win or lose. You can see the flag flying that way. It doesn't always go the same way down on the court, though. Her 
Advanska with two career wins over top 10 players at Luxembourg last year. She beat Dementieva at Miami. This year she beat Hingis. And certainly no one the caliber of Sharapova. Did take Sharapova to three sets earlier this year. She's done that again. And that was called out. Let's see if we have our first challenge. That certainly is worth a challenge. Yes, she is. We haven't had one of these official reviews today. Very close that ball to all lines. It was called out. While she's watching that, she's still got to be getting herself ready to serve a second serve if necessary. And uh, it was bit. out. Umpire was very quick to confirm. He thought it was out as well. But now another difficult second serve on this side. Terrific point from Radvanska. Doing so well, Sam, isn't she, to start the rally off deep up the middle of the court. They're probably getting so nervous. They're clapping, but they're not, like, going overboard. And then finally waiting till she gets a slightly shorter ball and being re very ready to go for it. She is not backing down. And a point away now from 4-2 up. Very friendly shot from Maria Sharapova. This could be a defining moment in Radvanska's career. Former top junior two years ago has made a steady progress up the rankings at the Sony D Ericsson WTA Tour level. And this could be the ultimate prize here, taking out the defending champion. It's not too early to start talking about that. She's two games away, up a break. Sharapova, though, still with time to erase that. Sharapova, you know, will fight till the bitter end. She changed her racket. She has done that a couple of times. This is such an important point because it's harder serving that end from where Maria, she's looking into the sun right now. It's not like Radvanska can guarantee that she's going to win her serve when she goes the other end. Sharapova has well, not been know. able to come back from being behind in a set in this match. She's just going through a really confused patch. She got an early lead in that second set and ran away with it. But struggled from behind in the first set and now tightening up when behind here in the third. Everything going Radvanska's way. Oh, that, was, that was out. Yeah, Excuse me. Bit of a late call. He suddenly stuck his arm out. Maria obviously in his way. The umpire had to look over at the linesman to see what the call was. His neck just drops over the baseline. So it's 15 all. Radvanska had a nice uh, net cord go her way in the middle of that point. Doesn't want to. I mean, that wasn't an easy rally for Radvanska. Maria hitting the ball well, but she doesn't want to get sloppy with any of her ground strokes and hit errors here. Good to see her. I, I think they're still going for it. She really backed off in that second set. Good service game so far from Maria. Sharapova just one of four on second serve points here in the third. Only won six total second serve points. Radwanska coming back again and threatening on the second serve. She forgot to do that. Yeah, you know, even if the serve's in, it means that she's alert, she's ready for it. She, t she started, she was doing that in the first set, and then she completely sort of forgot in the second set. 
Last eight games in a row. Beautiful return. Stands her ground and rips the winner. 30 all. Vonska looking for a chance to break, which would give her the opportunity to serve out the match. She needs to be on her toes for this return, too. Could be short. Long delays between the first and second serve for Sharapova have more often than not benefited in off and the knot become double false. She gets that one in. Radvanska has break point, which would give her the chance to serve for the match. Golly, a huge cheer yeah, after that too. point. And I, I got to say, Virginia, I do love her attitude the way she's crowding that service line on those second serves. What a lot of guts she's got. You know, I, and Sam, she's saying to Maria, you know, I'm going to go after this. Even if the serve's <laughs> in, she's going to make a better return. Listen to the cheering. Absolutely. Short in that ball, Red Vanska. Yes. I still think, you know, she's that one, that one was way too short, but I still think she's got to try to resist going to the corners because Maria really starts dominating those points. Sharapova fights off the break point. Deuce. And obviously she has to go to the corner sometime, but not just when she's just rallying. That was a good play, though. A second chance for Radvanska. Sharapova with 13 unforced errors in this third set alone and only seven winners to offset them. Not coming off the forehand side. 12th break point of the match for Radvanska. What happened there? Juice. Vonska going for the knockout, and finding the tape. I don't think that was in. No challenge. She still only won one second serve point here in the third. Yeah, here comes Radvanska. <laughs> Advancing on her toes. And pushes that just Not a little long. And finally Sharapova with a chance to hold here. I've got to think that if Sharapova does hold here, that Radvanska is going to feel she missed another opportunity and might be a little negative in the next game. Radvanska comes up with another incredible yes. winner. In a way, maybe the best point for her all match because she is getting nervous. I mean, everybody's getting nervous. We are, the crowd is. So Sharapova's got to keep fighting. <laughs> Sharapova should be the one who's nervous. I think she is. Well, I asked for Yuri. I think he must, he's going to have to sit in his hands soon. Another chance. 
for a 5-2 lead in the third. side wasn't it for the passing shot yes. she had to try if you look at this I mean she was in trouble there but she had to try to really dip it down the line keep it low over the net and even if she'd had to hit a second ball she might have had a chance but that was just the wrong place to try the passing shot so good effort from Maria back to deuce The longer this game Advanced goes on, shopping. the more tense Radvanska is going to be. Trying to erase the memory of that return right here. Game point Sharapova. Trying to stay with Radvanska. So far a clean serving game from Maria. No doubles. Shot. Some people in the crowd started reacting, but seemed to be right off the back of the line. Fifth deuce. What a critical game this has become. 2 4 third set. Sharapova fighting for her U.S. Open life here, the defending champ. It's the third round. The winner moves on to the round of 16 to face either Vitasova or Payer. being patient because she knows the serve's taking a long time. Now she needs to be on her toes. Wow, it's not coming yet. There she goes. She'll back off a little bit. And a double fault coaxed Rad perhaps by Radvanska. Gives her another chance to break. So, I mean, you see Maria taking so long, thinking about her second serve. You know, in a way, she almost needs to just get up there and not think. How's this serve going to be? A big one or a push? She hasn't had a big one in a while. No, that was a push, 80. 80 miles an hour. That's very frustrating. You cut right down on the pace and... Still don't get it in. Sharapova, two of nine in this set. Second serve points. Oh, look at this. <laughs> that was close. She does it. Radvanska breaks and will serve for the match against Sharapova. Radvanska leads five games to final set. Agnieszka Radvanska, the number 30 seed of Poland, has broken Sharapova three times in this third set, broken once herself, and now serves for personal history, serving to knock out the defending champion from this year's U.S. Open. Serving from the difficult end, the sun right there in her eyes now. Well, uh, how much better do you feel after the first point if you serve a good first serve and it goes out. Gary's getting ready to leave. Last year when Maria won, it was <laughs> just such a relief for her to win another Grand Slam. It isn't over yet, though, this match. I mean, it's going to be hard to close it out. Yeah, and that power from Maria just 
winning the day for her there. We talked about earlier in the match uh, the difference between a 30, 30th ranked player and a top player. They can get to this point, but closing it out is another story. That's when they have to make the next leap. And you see her father has left his seat. Can't take it anymore. Oh, that's awful. How would you feel? Also, the other big difference is the age difference, the two years between them. Another missed forehand return. And Redvanska will be looking for match point, 30-15. Difficult for Maria to make the choice of what she's going to do because she's winning the points when she overwhelms Redvanska, but she's making a lot of errors off the forehand side. Great serve, excellent serve right into the middle. Double match point 14, for Agnieszka Radwanska, an 18-year-old young lady from Poland, the number 30 seed. Thank you. She went for a big one. This would be the biggest upset of the U.S. Open 2007 so far. Is it in or out? Yeah, it's out! And Poland has a new hero. So does the U.S. Open. Welcome to the tennis world, Agnieszka Radwanska. A three-set win. Obviously, her family thrilled. And her little sister hopefully will draw inspiration from this here in the juniors.